Hello, everyone, uh, and welcome to Your Best Game Ever. Uh, this is a video series uh, to go along with the book, Your Best Game Ever, which is a tool book, not a rule book, about all the things you might want to know about as a player, as a GM of any role-playing game. Whether you're new, whether you're experienced, this really breaks down all the, the cool craft that goes into this lovely hobby and uh, makes, gives you lots of actionable advice to become an even better gamer and to have even better games. So today we are diving in with our, our video series and talking about character creation. So I'm Darcy and this is Monty and uh, hello everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so I have a question for you, Monty. Mm -hmm. um, I was wondering if you feel like you enjoy playing out characters more uh, at the table or kind of in the, the uh, away from table, sort of the headspace, like crafting your characters or thinking about them in between games. Do you, do you feel like you're an at the table or away from the table player? Uh, I'm a, I'm a away from the table player. I think, um, mm -hmm. if I'm in the middle of a great campaign, I'm probably more likely to spend time, more, more time thinking about my character than actually playing it. Mm. Um, but the, on the opposite end of that spectrum, um, I don't get that way until I'm already playing. Um, like, like I want character creation to go as fast as possible so I can start playing and yes. then I can be in the head of that, of that character. Uh, what about you? I, I feel that way very much. It takes me a while to find my footing as a character. And so I, yeah. I kind of need to see how they play out. Uh, and, but, but, uh, before I really feel like I can embody them well, um, character creation and, and character portrayal is something I've actually struggled with a lot. So I'm excited to talk about some tips for, really getting getting into character as fast as you can by kind of having really a good setup for character creation at the start. I feel like it's taken me a long time to get better at that. And now that I have, oh, it's made things so much easier and so much, you know, more relaxing when I feel like I have a character I can just, you know, I can just own and go to right away. So right. yeah, I agree. One of the things that we really stress in your best game ever is the idea that when it comes to the storytelling aspect of a role-playing game, everybody around the table is, is a storyteller, right? It's a group storytelling experience. It's not the GM is the storyteller and the, the, the players just kind of sit back and, and listen or, or even, even just sort of participate, right? It's, mm -hmm. it's actually cooperative. And I think that character creation is one of the biggest aspects that a player can have uh, in regard to storytelling, right? Mm. You're, you're creating the character. Like, ask any fiction writer, ask a TV writer, yeah. right? How important are the characters that you're creating? Well, they're, they're vital, right? They yeah. are, they are the, the heart of the, of the story. So um, I, I think that that's really important. Um, uh, what, what, what do you think, Darcy? Do you uh, see it that way as well? How important is character creation, do you think? Yeah, I mean, I think... I, I like to think about characters as, especially in, in a role-playing game, you know, compared to a novel, uh, we really see the world and any, any storytelling that happens is going to happen through the lens of those characters. And so, so you know, it, it can be a danger too, right? If like, if you, you as a GM come up with all this world building, but if the, if the players never engage with it, it doesn't show up on the table. And so I think you're absolutely right that like, uh, in a role-playing game, even more than many other types of media, I think, you know, we only we are often only seeing what the players see, and so those those PCs really, uh, the story has to flow through them. And so, yeah, I think it is really important, um, and it shapes the story in a lot of ways, right? Like you said, it contributes uh, back to the story. Yeah, yeah. So let's let's talk about how the choices that you make mm -hmm. uh, uh, in in story in character creation affect the storytelling, um, and and so. Like any good novel, mm -hmm. I think that um, you want to make it so that obviously you have a character that's going to work with mm -hmm. other characters, right? Because right. unless you have one of those weird sort of corner case games where it's just one player and one GM, um, you've got to have a character that mm -hmm. works with everybody else, right? That's, that's just like sort of the definition of the, of the activity, right? Yeah. Um, and, you know, so there's, there's making sure that they work with the other, other characters for sure. And, uh, and if you, if you are going to have some antagonism, I like to think about, you know, I like to set up, okay, if, you know, if this character is going to 
push against some of the other characters? How are we going to make sure that uh, it, it, we can all be in the same room together, right? I think there are always exceptions, but uh, I think <laughs> finding the reason that you're all on screen together is really important to start with. I think so too. And you can, like you said, you can set up some kind of antagonism or reluctance or whatever, yeah. right? But you have to do so knowing that you're either going to have to figure out a way to overcome that as a part mm -hmm. of the story right. or, or that it's something that will, will diminish. Um, because again, right, you're, you're here to make a story. I think that's something that's really closely tied to that too is you have to make a character that's going to want to go on the adventures or missions or whatever the kinds of things that your characters are going to do, right? I mean, right. I think that a very valid thing to ask whenever you sit down to play any role-playing game mm -hmm. is, what do characters do in yeah. this game, right? If you're playing D&D, yeah. &D, characters go into dungeons, fight monsters, and get treasure. Now, that's mm -hmm. not the sum total of D&D, &D, <laughs> right? But that's, not, that's like the core. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, you know, if you ask yourself that, then you should then create a character that will do that thing, mm -hmm. right? Um, I remember when we were when we were designing third edition D and D. One of the things that we changed from mm -hmm. second to third was uh, in second it said that uh, halflings hated going on adventures, and right. <laughs> I, you know we just thought. Oh, come on, right? <laughs> Everyone yeah. who plays a halfling now has to pretend to not want to play the game. Oh, gosh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I get the source material, right? Bilbo right. was a reluctant uh, adventurer, but, you know, come on. Don't yeah. have that be the default. Right, um, that could be a, an interesting personality trait for some halflings if you want to play up that, but don't make everybody who wants to play a halfling have to right. overcome that narrative hurdle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. So, right. Don't make a character that has to be dragged into having the fun that you're yes. going to have, right? Uh, and I, I, I like what you think about, I like thinking about what does this character do, right? If I was going to, if I was going to have a, a clips, you know, episode of, of the TV show that we're running, right? As, as we flip through all my cool characters moments, what, what are some of those moments of, of how, how I really got spotlight? And so I think, I think that's another great piece of advice about, you know, one thing I really like about role playing games is that it is a collaborative story and I like how spotlight can move around. And so we can have uh, sessions that feel really different because different characters are forward and different characters are sort of um, at the, at the crux of that particular story. So like, I think one thing that's really important is thinking about your own characters arcs or what's important to them. Or if you thought about the very, your character episode, what kinds of things do you think you want to find when you're, when you're spotlit. I think ha like kind of having some ideas about that when I start out is really helpful for me. That's like character arcs in Invisible Sun, right? Is right. That thinking about, think, yeah. Yeah, I think that that's, I think that's absolutely true. I think that the, the, the way in which RPGs are a different kind of storytelling than mm. say a, a book or a movie is that every character is the main character in their yeah. story, but every character is also a side character in one of the, in, in all the other characters' stories, mm -hmm. right? So you have to kind of look at it from both points of view. Right. Um, and, and that's interesting, right? Because it, it means that you can think about your character in terms, like you were just saying, right? Like mm -hmm. the things that you do, what are, how are you going to go about them? But at the same time, you know, how are you going to help or hinder or be comedy relief Mm -hmm. for somebody else's story. Right. Yeah. Um, I think w one thing I really like, like, you know, so, so as if you're having your sort of session zero character creation session, um, one thing I really like doing is as I get a sense of the other characters, I think it's really helpful to be noting what little details they, they give you because just as I think the, the player characters are really, the lens, the, the, the nozzle through which, you know, story is going to funnel, right? If it, if it doesn't kind of happen while things are on screen, um, it's hard for that, that story element to live or breathe. I, you know, so the way to bring it on screen is to either as yourself, as your own character, you know, bring those narrative elements up, but also as a supporting character, right? You can, you can say, oh, I, you know, I, 
I look over and I, I suspect I see my friend over there is very bitter at the, at the battle we just lost as they're so proud, right? You can like, you can bring those personality elements to life for your fellow players. And I think it, it just tells such a richer story and the other players appreciate it. And it lets you kind of engage with the story while, without taking spotlight all the time. So I think, yeah, knowing how you fit together is really helpful. Yeah, I think that like, you know, if, if you see that your friend is making a character that's a curmudgeon, right? right. It's because they want to play that, right? And they want to yeah. be that character, right? So feed, feed that a little bit, right? And, and yeah. give them some things to be curmudgeonly about because yes. clearly that's what they want, right? <laughs> oh, I love that. Uh, so we've talked a bit about some of the, you know, things you should consider story-wise. How do we fit together narratively, personality-wise? But uh, in most role-playing games, you're also going to be picking some mechanical elements. What should we consider to kind of make the, most power, the best characters or the best characters for the best story or the best game? What do you consider when you sit down? Well, so I don't necessarily think about things in terms of like, like right choices or wrong choices, mm -hmm. but I think there, I think you're right that there are really important kind of high level choices that you want to think about, right? Is mm -hmm. like, and the first one I would think about is, is your character going to be like specialized and focused or are they going to be general, mm -hmm. right? And, and both of those are interesting choices, right? Like I'm going to be the best starship pilot right. ever, right? And I'm going to put all of my skills or points or whatever my game system has, right, into being a great starship pilot. Yeah. But that means, of course, like when it comes to, you know, helping, you know, healing other characters or talking to NPCs or whatever, mm -hmm. you're, you're not going to have any advantage there, right? Mm -hmm. Or you could be a little bit good at all of those things. Um, and the thing, the thing is, though, if you make that broad choice. If you say, mm -hmm. I'm going to be a little bit good at everything, you need to be, uh, uh, you need to be aware that everyone at the table who's chose to be focused is going to be better than you at the thing that they are specialized on. Right. Right. So if you're a little bit good at combat, the guy who's awesome at combat is going to outshine you and you have to yeah. be okay with that. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Goodness. And I think, you know, finding out how much you like leaning into failure kind of plays into this for me. Sometimes I'm like, I, I'm so excited to be the klutz or, you know, the, I'm excited to play up my deficiencies. And so sometimes I, I'll, I'll look at that and kind of um, think about all the fun role playing I'll get to have by being bad at something. <laughs> um, so I think there's, yeah, there's also kind of like archetypes you could think about too, right? Um, kind of, are you, when I when I first sit down to build a character, I kind of think about characters from stories I like. You know, am I am I the am I the nerd? Um, you know, I'm, I'm often playing the nerd. Surprise, surprise! I like playing the scientist, right? But uh, sometimes I'll I'll think about okay, I've been playing a lot of nerds lately. Do I do I want to experiment around with uh, playing kind of a, a more physically fit uh, character or more dexterous or talky? You know, so I think I like to think about like big archetypes of characters and then and then start filling in my stats from there, so. Yeah, yeah I, I, I agree. Um, I think that, you know, kind of the, the physical versus the mental choice is, is probably going to exist in just mm -hmm. about any game that you're gonna play. Right. And, you know, uh, and that can be, you can look at that in a lot of different ways, right? It's, is it brain versus brawn? Is it action versus mm. sort of contemplation, right? Yeah. You think about things and care, you know, study them really closely or do you just leap in and, you know, yeah. throw open the door and jump into the room or whatever, right? Yeah. What, 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 what's your instinct, Darcy? What, what, like, if you haven't given it, you know, it, it, if you just, if I just said, make a character right now, Darcy, are you a contemplator or are you a leaper? Ooh, I'm definitely a contemplator, but uh, I'm definitely a contemplator. I am. I want to be the quiet botanist in the back who's like picking flowers <laughs> and discovering a new species. Like I love, I love that aspect. But um, I do. I think it's so good to try outside your instinct too, because 
I, I've, I've recently been finding myself when I do play a really action oriented, you know, make a quick split decision, leap into the fray of battle character. I enjoy it so much. And it like, it comes more naturally than I expected. I think I just, I need to get over the hump of like, okay, I have decided I'm going to be a, an action forward character. Um, I, th- I think it comes from being shy about like stealing the spotlight. I think I'm always right. nervous about that, but I think that you can totally, you know, I can, I can leap into the fray, but I'm really setting something up for another character or, you know, there are ways to manage that. So what about you? Are you, yeah, a- I, think, I think that, uh, well, so, <laughs> uh, I probably want to be a contemplator, but, um, <laughs> You know, actually, you know, here's what I would I would do. Okay. I would kind of look to see what the rest of the group is doing. Yeah, right. Um, because if 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 the group just desperately needs somebody to just kind of leap into the fray, right, and they're yep. just, they're just kind of spinning their wheels, I'm perfectly willing to be that guy. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm also willing to be the person who says, "Hey, wait a minute, guys, let's give this some thought." Yeah. Um, but at the same time, like like I, I think that's a fine strategy, but you don't you don't want to be a contrarian, right. right? You don't want to be the dick who just leaps and, you know, opens up the door while everyone's trying to solve the puzzle right? right to, to draw monsters in because you're bored. Right. Uh, that's, that's not what, what I mean when I say, you know, a, a leap into the fray kind of character. Right. Uh, uh, you want to, like you said, you don't want to steal the spotlight. You want yeah. people to be able to do what they want to do and, and, and so that you can do what you want to do. Mm-hmm. Here's here's a a a uh, problematunity that I've had often, um, <laughs> I like and that, that word. is and that, and that is that I have a deep and abiding aversion to optimized characters, to making optimized characters myself. I don't know what it is about me. I'm sure um, in deep hours of therapy, I could discover my <laughs> deep rooted distaste for <laughs> optimization or being specialized at things. Um, but I guess like. I often like to choose characters that, uh, you know, if I, if I start with an archetype, I like to find a way to really break it in an interesting way or, or, um, or make, make it surprising to me. Cause I, I think I like to see how that plays out. So that might be something like, um, you know, maybe I'm playing, uh, the wizard. <laughs> I here I always play anytime I'm playing the wizard, I'm not going to have fireball. I'm not going to have anything useful that you hoped a wizard would carry because I have, I am waiting to use like, <laughs> I don't know, uh, Liaman's tiny hut. Okay. I, <laughs> wait, okay. It's, that's the kind of like horrible utility wizard that never comes up that I am. And so I, I guess I, I really, I, w- I was just wondering if you had any thoughts about how we choose optimized or like standardized options versus kind of twisting the, the mold. Like what, what would you, what should you consider? <laughs> Right. Uh, I know my again, I think, I think this is one of those, uh, you know, there are no bad choices, right? Mm. Because I think that, but, but it's a choice, right? Am I going to, yeah. am I going to fit the mold? Am I going to be the, the fireball wizard? Right. Or am I going to be the, the tiny hut wizard? Yeah. Um, and uh, both valid choices. However, I, the only thing that I would say is, is that that's the kind of thing that you need to communicate to the yeah. GM, to the, pl- the other players, whatever, right? Like, if if I'm playing the fighter and I say, okay, let's charge in and fight the goblins. Okay, Darcy, throw a fireball. And you're like, uh, I don't do fireball. I need to know that beforehand. Right, right. I think that makes sense. <laughs> unless, unless, of course, you know, we want that comedy moment. Right. <laughs> but that comedy moment can be an in-character comedy moment and the players can all still be on board, right? I think you're right. totally right that... Uh, it's just about, you know, any good game is one where, you know, people kind of, you know, you manage expectations in the right way and don't, uh, (laughs) um, yeah, don't take people by surprise except where that's like what your intent is. Right. So I, and I think like if I was playing with you, right. If you knew I was a, a, a quiet contemplative wizard with only utility spells, you might be thinking about, okay, maybe I should play a little more like action forward character. So communicating right. can really help everybody else out too. I have, I have played that wizard. I have played <laughs> where the, the, the sort it's of really fun <laughs> running quote was, Oh, that sounds interesting. I wish I could do that. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. 
because I couldn't do any of the things that people expected a wizard to be able to do, you know. So I think that already leads into kind of another category of considerations for character gen, which is uh, personality, right? Like you saying, you know, you telling me that little catchphrase of your character starts to tell me a little bit about what kind of person you are, not just your mechanics or your story role, right? So right. Um, do you, yeah, do you feel like that's, I guess, you know, there's lots of personality that tends to emerge for me during play, but how, what can we do to kind of uh, get that more uh, early established, right? During character generation, do you have, how do you start to build a personality? So kind of like we were saying about thinking about, you know, your role and how you're going to fit your role or what your character does. I think, you know, just spend a couple of minutes thinking about the kinds of things that are probably going to happen in the game, right? Mm -hmm. If you're, if you're playing a traveler, you're probably at some point going to get onto a starship and, and fly through space. Yeah. Right. Is that, is that something you're cool with? Is that something you're terrified of? Right. Yeah. And, and just kind of asking yourself those questions, right. Or, 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 or even more basic than that, right. Like, is this character the kind of person who helps out a stranger in need? Mm. Is this the kind of person who helps out a friend in need? Right. Mm -hmm. um, and how far would you go? Yeah. Uh, those kinds of things will, will uh, asking those questions, I think uh, will, will help start to, kind of define the character even before those things happen, you know, at the table, before right. they happen on the stage. What do you do, Darcy? Yeah, I, I really resonate well when I have a, like a couple either concepts or, you know, quirks or personality traits to, to riff off of. Like, I think I, I often need, you know, to ask, to have a couple of these, you know, what do I value? What do, uh, you know, what's a, what's a weird thing I like. Um, and ideally, you know, and so I really do well when I, I kind of have these kind of improv, like, I don't know, story prompty kind of questions to work off of, or even like randomized traits that I can, you know, pull up online or pull up from various books. So I, I, I usually need a couple keystones. Like, I think I really do well when some of those questions are really tuned to the kind of game we're going to play too, right? It's not just, you know, what kind of, when I'm, you know, if I'm playing a game about, um, uh, about cats, uh, then <laughs> about cats and what they get up to in their, <laughs> in their nightmare dreams and their, their dream landing, uh, asking what Chewie does when no one's around and, uh, and like, on downtime is not really often as helpful as saying, uh, when Chewie's friend is in, is in need and, uh, or Chewie has to cross a body of water, what does he do? Ha knowing kind of like those specific situations can really help me. So I think you're right that the kinds of questions you can ask is angle it toward the story you think you want to tell a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I think that, um, uh, you know, you mentioned quirks and, and, yeah. and maybe even flaws, right? That's, that's a really interesting, <laughs> <I'm chewy>. um, <laughs> that's a really interesting thing. I think it's especially true at the very beginning, right? Yeah. Because you need something to kind of hang your hat on and say, okay, this is my character is, you know, uh, always coming up with funny nicknames for people that they, right. Meet. Yeah. And you'll find, I think, at least in my experience, that those kinds of things over the long haul, if you do it too much, become just annoying. Yeah. Um, but at, at the start, I think they're, they're really useful for like, okay, that's, that's a thing that this character does, right? Or, or come up with a, like a, 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 something that they say, right? Mm -hmm. Like if you're playing the dwarf fighter, right? Have a battle cry, yeah. you know? you know, that by Moradin's axe or whatever that you, that you say as you leap into battle every time. Because yeah. the thing that will happen there is that people will start to expect it, right? Yeah. And, 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 Play and toward have, it. right, right. You, they'll, you'll have a character defining moment as everyone realizes, okay, he's about to shout by Moradin's yeah. axe, right? Um, and just like a lot of TV shows start out with kind of kitschy or, or really like, you know, think like kind of one more one note characters, you can find the nuance in that later. So I think starting kind of with some strong character choices, uh, 
and then making sure they don't stay annoying. <laughs> um, right. It's really helpful. Um, there's something you know, that, that yeah. I get asked a lot um, mm -hmm. is, uh, you know, I, I've been playing, I've been role playing role playing games for a while now. And I just, I don't, I can't think of ways to make a character that's really in original, right? Mm -hmm. right? All of my, you know, warrior type characters are all kind of the same. Every time yeah. I play a scientist character, it kind of comes across the same. How can I make it different? What do you, what would you say to that? Oof. Uh, so I stressed out a lot when I first started GMing, especially uh, about like being original. Um, and, and I think, I think I, I learned that you, you know, I don't need to create in some vacuum in some isolated tower, right? Like the, the, the enormity of stories that humans have told <laughs> over the, the, the longest of time, right? There's, um, it's, it's valid to draw inspiration from places and then make it your own. And so I think as a player too, I learned that I, if I tried to create in a vacuum and come up with this like this character that no one's ever done before, I didn't know how to play that character. <laughs> like, I just, I it didn't have enough like handholds, you know? Uh, and so I think fi like finding my inspirations um, and, and then mashing them up or finding the, the, the tweak on it, right? So finding characters that I kind of felt like I could sink into. Like I play a lot of Lara Croft characters. That's just a, a thing I do, but I'm okay with that now because now I'm finding, okay, how does, how, you know, if, this, if we were doing kind of weird Pokemon types, you know, Lara Croft by way of, uh, let's say, you know, um, like, I don't know, some Star Wars pilot, hotshot pilot, right? So where can I find that? And then that starts to feel more and more new as you kind of cross it with other things I know and know how to play. Um, There's, um, uh, you know, I'm sure everyone has seen in movies and whatnot, right, that in Hollywood, there's a thing called the elevator pitch, right, where you sum up your, your story, right, your screenplay right. really, really quickly. You know, you say it's Die Hard meets Steel Magnolias, right, right? Or, or whatever. Um, <laughs> Here for and, it, for the record, greenlit. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, and, and you can do that with characters, right? Uh, which is kind of what you were saying, right? You were, uh, what did you- I didn't know it was elevator pitch. Yeah, that makes sense. And a, and a, like Poe Dameron or someone yeah. like that, right? Um, you know, but you can, you know, go crazy, right? Yeah. And, and say, this is, you know, Black Panther meets Clarice Starling from uh, Silence of the Lambs, right? Oh gosh, like, well, yeah. How does that work, Ooh. right? Oh, actually, you know, and you start thinking about it and you pick up a couple of traits from each character. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, it, it, it gets kind of interesting. Um, you know, not every combination works, but it's, a, right. it's just a good creative, you know. Exercise, kind of. Yeah. yeah exactly. I've never really tried finding really distant combinations and seeing what that brings about. So I'll have to try that. That's really cool. Yeah. Um, one thing that I've seen a lot of your players have done, uh, like in your um, Invisible Sun, like long running playtest narrative uh, that has turned into a regular narrative, um, is that, you know, there's some people use like Pinterest or, or other kind of character defining like mood boards. And uh, that's something that a lot of other people I know use well. And I'm not as good at like going out and finding art, but when I do find you know, a good piece of character art that can really help flesh my, my character out as well. But like, yeah, what, what, what would you advise people to do about kind of finding visual imagery for their characters too? Oh, you know, I, I think that that's perfect, right? There's, mm -hmm. there's so much great yeah. artwork out there. I mean, there's probably great artwork in the game rule book right? that you have that you're playing with, right? And so, you know, you can just flip through that and say, okay, my character looks yeah. like this, right? Yeah. Except, you know, I'm, I'm I'm playing a male character, or or yeah. you know you know you can you can tweak it right. Except yeah. oh, I I always wear red, not green, or or whatever, right? But but I think sometimes having a visual and having a visual that you can show the other mm -hmm. players, right? Like I knew a group once that everyone kind of chose the actor who played them in the oh movie, yeah yeah right. So you'd be like you know okay. Um, uh, Jesse Plemons is playing my character and that gives everybody a, a, an image in their head of, of what your character might look like, what might sound like. Um, yeah. That's interesting. Uh, that's a, that's an interesting kind of way to go. 
if we want to go, uh, if we sort of step through our senses as we think about character creation, uh, you know, there's also the, the auditory nature, right? There's the uh, what you say, how you say it, uh, you know, kind of your, your, you know, some people are voice actors and can give different voices to all their characters. I am not, <laughs> but, <laughs> but I found that uh, even, you know, if you, if you search online for sort of improvisers, there's lots of advice on how to do kind of character voices for many different kinds of media or, or acting. Um, and I found a couple really simple tricks have helped me start speaking more in character and uh, thinking about, you know, I can't do accents or anything, but I can think about, oh, this is a character who speaks more slowly. And how does that feel? This is a character who speaks really, uh, you know, kind of percussively. Uh, or I can try to mess around a little bit with tone. I speak a little deeper or I don't know. Are, are there any other like tricks you have for how your character actually speaks or things you could do with what you're saying? To yeah, there's, there's one and, and it's, it's weird, but it works. Mm. And that is um, uh, your posture as you're sitting there at the Ooh, table. I right? love it. Like if I'm going to play C-3PO, yeah. right, I'm going to sit up very straight Right, and oh. that is going to tell my brain. Yes. Okay, remember your C three PO, right? But if I'm playing yes. Han Solo, I'm probably going to recline back, and I'm gonna, you know, be much more casual, and and suddenly then, um, you know, again, it's 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 almost telling my, without even consciously thinking about it. Yeah. You know, oh, this is gonna it's gonna change the way you talk. It's gonna change, you know, the way you, uh, the way you act. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, I think that, that that's, a, that's a good trick. Oh, that's so smart. I've had a, an exercise in a LARP once where we, we were told to walk like our characters. So we had just picked out characters and we really didn't know a lot about them. And you had to walk down a hallway and walk back in an exaggerated form that somehow informed you about your character. It really wasn't about everybody else. It was about getting your body to move in a way and starting to start up all the processes of, of how am I you know, having my physical space relate to this character, which is super cool. But yeah, in a chair, you could just think about posture. Ah. Right. Uh, so let's talk a little bit, like every, when we talk about character creation, lots mm. of people start thinking about their backstory, right? Yeah. How, uh, what do you feel about backstory? Uh, when, when, when you sit down to make a character, how much of your backstory do you come up with? What do you, what do, you do, Darcy? I, uh, for better or for worse, I am a very reverse engineering kind of person. I kind of, I, I wonder if it's because I kind of like mystery. And so I, as the player, like to kind of find out, I like to, you know, make some strong character choice, right? This person is, is really sassy and clearly running away from something, uh, blah, blah, blah. And like, I don't know how they got there. And I like that because then I can maybe think about it as through play and reverse engineer it. Or if a story element comes up, I could go, hey, would my character have kind of, you know, are these the people I've been running from? And of course I have to make sure the GM is okay with me doing that. But I, I really start with probably too little backstory to be frank, uh, <laughs> but, but I like the reverse engineering side. Um, what about you? You know, that, uh, that speaks to me. That, that makes a really? lot of sense cool. to me. And, and it, it makes sense to me both as, a, a player and as a writer, right? Because mm -hmm. think about think about your favorite ongoing TV show, right? Where yeah. in the middle of season three, a character says, you know, makes a revelation about their past, yes. right? That we didn't know about at all. That's a cool moment, yeah. right? And it's very possible that the writers didn't even know that that character did go to that college and have that experience at college at the, you know, in season one, right? And so I think it's okay for the player to not know everything that happened, right? And it, it allows you to do really interesting things like when you're going into the bar, your character's going into the bar, you know, you can turn to the GM and say, Ooh. hey, you know, um, wouldn't, wouldn't it be cool if, if actually I've been here before and they threw me out the last time I was here yeah. and I got to, you know, I got to make nice with the bartender to, to stay in here and, and, and we can have that scene. Um, I think most gems are going to be totally open to that kind yeah. of thing. Right. Because, because, you know, what you're doing is you are, you are marrying your character to the world, right? You're, mm -hmm. you're, you're making yourself a part of the world that the game masters put forth. And, and yeah. that's, that's, that's a great moment, right? Oh, I love that. Um, 
Ah, goodness. And I also, I, I will say that I think the big drawback to at least my style of like making strong and fundamentally random character choices at the beginning and figuring out how it came together later, I would say the one drawback to the people who kind of have these more well thought out backstories is that I can kind of run into weird contradictions. And sometimes, you know, sometimes I really make big errors and my, my players and co-players and GMs are usually happy to kind of hand wave or, you know, find a way to sidestep it. But um, for, for, I guess for people who are making these bigger backstories, um, what, one thing I like to think about is, is making sure you don't get too into that backstory before you've kind of had the first session or two. And kind of as the world comes to life around you, I always think it's, it's, it's always going to surprise you uh, in, in part because this story is something we're all telling together. So parts of the story, you know, what the other players are doing are important to my story. And so if I design in a vacuum uh, too deeply, I can, I can miss some of the cool opportunities for crossover. So I think, I think doing, making sure you kind of build that, that deeper backstory a little after play is kind of something I would recommend for people. You know, like you were saying, right? Pay attention to the other characters, work with the other players, work with the GM. Mm-hmm. Right? Like, like don't, I guess, uh, you know, like you were saying, don't create your character, you know, utterly in a vacuum. Don't, don't fill your backstory with a lot of stuff without talking to the GM and say, hey, you know, my elf, uh, I was thinking, you know, even though el- most elves probably come from the woods, you know, I would like mine to have lived in the city all their life. Is that cool, right? Right. And more than likely, the GM's going to say, you know, not only is that cool, but yeah. here's, a, you know, here's a, a, you know, an organization that you could be a yeah. part of, right? right. Or, right. Um, that that kind of collaboration, right? That gets back to that idea that, that character creation is storytelling. Uh, I think that's such a good point. And if we, if we, this is kind of a player focused episode, but uh, just from the GM side too, oh, I love when my players come to me with story content about stuff that they're excited about. You know, um, I guess like I really embrace when players do bring me kind of some backstory ideas early on because it lets me, I know they're going to be instantly invested. So that makes my job so much easier, right? I know that if I, I put the, the apple of Orinth in, you know, in, in the, the episode somewhere, they're just going to absolutely hyper-focus on that and I can make them do anything I want because they <laughs> really want that apple of Orinth, whatever that is, you know? And so that, yeah, you know, gosh, well, I think we talked about in the world building mm. uh, episode that we did, right? Yeah. That the more you can have the players help you create the world through their backstory, right? Is yeah. the richer the world's going to be, but also the more invested they're going to be, right? They're going to, they're going to be drawn to, to uh, the apple of yeah. orange, right? <laughs> yeah. Whatever that is. Um, <laughs> one thing I, one, one thing I might think about is like, depth of backstory, right? Like, so I can, I can definitely get, I I kind of get um, information creep and I start to not be able to remember all the little details, especially over a long campaign. And so um, I tend to find myself, you know, more interest. I I like to spend those neurons, those those two neurons I'm rubbing together uh, to get here on, on trying to remember all the stuff that's happened while this group is together on this storyline. So I think one other piece of advice might be like, you know, your backstory should, your backstory is great and it's a great internal experience sometimes and maybe some of it comes to the table. But uh, I think making sure that you uh, kind of prioritize or often are focusing on stuff that's happened to your character recently rather than like just twiddling your thumbs until we get to that part of the the story that lets you tell that old piece of backstory. I think <laughs> that's that's a way to kind of be a good co-player is kind of making sure you're really invested in what's going on in the now <laughs> and not yes. just past. Yeah. So you know, and I, one last thing that I would add yeah. is, um, and, and it really kind of dovetails with that very nicely is, you know, you can have this most elaborate backstory and you can talk about what, you know, your grandparents did and, yeah. and all of that stuff. But there's a pretty good chance that that none of that's ever going to come into play. Right. What's far more likely to come into play is what your character was doing last week. Mm, yeah. And so I'm not saying don't figure out 
your character's childhood or whatever, if, if you think that's going to be important. But, but also think about like the very recent past if when you're doing yeah. backstory, right? Like if you're starting in this particular city, why are you there? Oh, I like that. Yeah. And what just happened to you so that when you meet the other player characters, right, you yeah. have a, you know, you have a thing to talk about. Well, I just found this great, you know, store that sells books or whatever. Yeah, or I was recently kicked out of that bar that we're about to walk into, right? right. It's fresh exactly. Memory. memory. You can bring it up easily. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I like that a lot. Um, yeah, I think there's there's lots we can go into here, uh, but I think I think it's valid to design on your own. I think it's valid to uh, you know <laughs> reverse engineer like I do, and I think communicating with you know with the players and the GMs to make sure it's all fitting appropriately with the story um, is kind of a process that continues over all of play. Um, so start start those conversations early in character creation, and, and that'll bring you far. I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I agree. <laughs> so while this is just one video where we uh, dive into some of the actionable advice for character creation, uh, there's lots more to find in your best game ever, the book. So check yeah. that out. Um, there's advice from, from Monty, from all the great uh, you know, consulting experts who are on it. So uh, it's definitely something you'll want to check out. So check that out at yourbestgameever.com. Um, and we would love, love, love to hear what you consider when you create a character. What, what are some of your uh, things that you really think it would really help other people? What are things that you're currently struggling with? So uh, let us know in the comments below or use the hashtag your best game ever and start that conversation because we can all have better games and we should start because it's, uh, there's a lot of gaming to be had and we got to get to it. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you, Monty. And uh, yeah. yeah, we'll talk to you soon, folks. Have a Bye, great everybody. evening. <laughs>